because eventually we all have to go through these trials and tribulations of life. Right. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. Everyone. You know, so you know, no one will be exempt. Go ahead. It's one thing, though, if, like in, in my experience, is that you can, you can ask the Lord and stuff, too, because he speaks to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, through his word and stuff. Amen. Like when, you, when you say, like, search me, O Lord. Amen. You know, that's why I love the Psalms and stuff, because yeah. like some of the, the, the way that David would, with the loving way he would come before God and say, Lord, you know, search me. Is there any unclean thing? Amen. Me? He will. Exactly. You know, and God will expose that. Yeah, he will. If yes, he will. So that your prayers are being hindered. Yeah, amen. He will speak through to Yes, you, he will. He will. You, if you ask him. He will reveal to you what's going on exactly. and what you need to correct. Exactly. Amen. And you got to, and then you can't have that pride to where you don't want to um, listen to the Spirit. Like I said, you want to be like, okay, if that's what I'm doing wrong, turn from it. You know because God might just be saying, you need to go and forgive that brother. Lord, yeah, you, Lord, I mean, that joke, you don't know what he did to me. There you go. And see, sometimes if you're holding things like that. Mm -hmm. like, no, exactly. Yeah, can, Your prayers won't be answered. They're, exactly. yeah, they're, he said they're an abomination unto him. That's detestable. He said, he said, he that turns the ear from hearing the law, even his prayers are abomination. Wow. So it's like, wow, you know how he sees homosexuality. I mean, homosexuality is abomination. You see he's eating unclean foods, abomination. You see he's having sex with animals, abominable. So all these things he sees abominable, he equates that when you're not keeping the commandments of God. Wow. So he's telling you that. So you, your prayers will not be heard unto him. Let's go to uh, first like Kings. The spouses, if they not on one accord. Amen. Exactly. Your prayers will be answered. Yeah, exactly. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. First Kings 18. First Kings 18, we're going to read uh, 17 through 21. Yeah, this is with, you know, Elijah's dealing with um, with the four of something prophets. And, you know, like, I know this is funny because, you know, he was um, he was daring the prophets, you know, uh, trying to see, you know, um, this, 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 is a, this is kind of a long story, but pretty much letting them know how, you know, they were putting water down and, and they were lapping it up and then uh, they were asking for their, uh, for their gods, for because they were praying to Baal yeah, to bring yeah. fire down on their stuff. It didn't happen. Right. So he told them. He said, that's when he started mocking them. He's like, ha, oh, where's your God? Where's your God? That's what Elijah was doing to him. Is he sleep? <laughs> He's asleep, this and that. But when he told them, he said, look, not only but put all this stuff on the, on the altar, they soaked it in the water, and yeah. that fire came up and lit all of that stuff yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Sucked it all up to let them know that it, it was uh, their God. I mean, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. He did that. Not not their so-called fake gods that they were, that were serving. So right here, so that was part of the story. So now we're going to get here to verse 17. 1 Kings 18 and 17. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And why is he saying that? He said, aren't you the one that always troubled Israel? The reason why he was saying that, because every time Elijah or the prophets were coming to them, they were coming to them with thus concerning what thus says the Lord. But every time, they always think of it. Every time when the prophet of God would come to them, they always thought he was coming with trouble because they were not being obedient to God. So every time he was coming, yeah. he was kind of he was trying to get them back to God. Yeah. And every but they were like, nah. Every time you come, you always trying to trouble us. Like nah, because one, y'all not being obedient to the right, word of the Lord. Right. So yes, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna seem trouble unto you. But if you were to hearken unto the voice of the Lord and be obedient and keep His commandments, then you don't have to worry about me coming to you. I, uh, instead, instead of uh, you know dealing with what God's gonna do to you, He can come to you with the blessings of God. Instead of telling you what's gonna happen if you continue not it's in His word. Like says, every time you come, so you get bad news. It's always bad news right from the Lord because they're not being obedient. Yeah. Remember, the house of Israel was evil. Exactly. The house exactly. of Israel was evil, and then eventually the house of Judah was the same way. You know, what I'm saying we mm -hmm. end up turning against them too as well. Verse eighteen. And He answered. I have not troubled Israel, mm -hmm. but thou and thy father's house, mm -hmm. and that he have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. He said, see, I have not troubled Israel. What are you talking about? He said, no, I have. He said, but thou, but you and your father's house, mm -hmm. and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. A false it's, on God. it's on them. Amen. Exactly. Go ahead. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. 50, 450, go ahead. And the prophets of the groves, 400, mm -hmm. which eat at Jezebel's table. Mm -hmm. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. 
And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? Mm -hmm. If the Lord be God, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Right. So now so now what we're gonna do is go to um let's go to Revelation. Because you know, yeah, let's go to Revelation uh chapter three. So he's trying to say, like he said, ain't no in between. You either gonna follow the Lord or follow Baal. You know what I'm saying? The uh the um the Canaanite God. So he's letting them know you can't serve two masters. Now mm -hmm. even Jesus he said you cannot serve two masters for your loved one. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Exactly. So we're gonna see. What he says here in Revelation chapter 3. Because right now he's, he's talking to, 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 Laod, uh, to Laodiceans. To Laodiceans. Right here from, from, uh, from Laodicea. He's, been, he's, been, he's talking to this church right here. Go ahead. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Go ahead. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. Mm -hmm. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So there's no way in the world God, God doesn't want you to be like, okay, I'm I'm a I'm gonna keep your days, God, your holy days, but I'm gonna still keep these holidays. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna still keep the Sabbath, but I'm gonna still keep Sunday. I'm gonna still do all these things that's following in the world, but I'm gonna still keep your commandments. You can't do both. It's only one or the other. That's what he's trying to tell you. It's only one or the other. You can't do both. It's either rock. It's either you can be all in for him, or you can also, because uh, like I said, are you also gonna um, be of this world? You can't be both. He said, "I'll spew you out of my mouth." Because when you're warm, you're a combination of hot and cold. But he rather said, "I'd rather you be hot or cold." So if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be cold, you might as well, like I said. So if if you're not gonna follow God and say the, the way He says follow Him. You might as well not even follow him. That's what pretty much he's saying. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to follow him, then put all your heart, soul, mind, and strength in following to him. Amen. You can't. You can't do both though. You can't do both at all. Amen. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter six, and we're we gonna get some uh, get a better understanding about that right here. Yeah, okay, Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen through eighteen. Go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Mm -hmm. And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Right. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Exactly. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them that walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And, and he said, but he said, we are his temple. How are we his temple? Because what dwells in us when we follow in him? His word. His word. Amen. Amen. Exactly. It's his word that dwells in us. And his word is the spirit. That's what he's letting you know. That's what dwells in us, and that's that, and that's the temple of God. We're the temple of the God because His Word dwells in us. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, mm. and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Right. Amen. Amen. He says, Wherefore, He says, Come up out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Unclean thing. Mm -hmm. So like so like you know, so even dealing with like I said, even remember he said when you eat these unclean foods, you make your soul abominable. It's unclean. He doesn't want you dealing with anything that's unclean. He don't want you dealing with unclean spirits or familiar spirits, because they're unclean. Because you know in the, in the old testament they were called Familiar spirits. In the New Testament, Jesus called them unclean spirits. But why were they called familiar spirits? Because these spirits would come in someone that's familiar to them. Like they'll come Amen. and you like right. a, uh, if, uh, if your mother or whoever passed away. They, they, they come in that. That's why they show you. Know what I'm saying? Because they want you to say, oh, they're familiar. And then you open up to them. And that's when they can go ahead and. Exactly. They, exactly. And see, and I've had, I've had friends and acquaintances that I've told when they, you know, I let them finish. And I said, well, brother, you know, I'm just going to have to be honest with you. You know, who you saw or whoever you were encountered was 
not your mother, exactly. your brother, exactly. your sister. That was a familiar spirit. Amen. That that knew, you know, that I mean I mean, you know, when when we live and stuff, we have the personality. Exactly. And, 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 and like they said, we gotta be careful because the Satan, he appears as, as an angel. Like, like, amen. And you got something that gotta be and I've had people get kind of upset. Bro, I know that was my mom. Right. Yeah, I know. Right. I said, well, okay, right. well, but I leave it alone. Right. I said, leave it alone. I said, well, I said, absence of the body is to be present with the Lord. And once when you're dead, I mean, you you sleep. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. Yeah, but I know you, you sleep. Yeah. There's no coming back. There's no coming back. There's exactly. no coming back until, just like, until God. Amen. That's just right. like the witch of Endor. Remember exactly. when, when uh, Saul went to go seek the witch of Endor? Who, and then, you know, she brought up Samuel. That wasn't Samuel, though, that she bet they actually Absolutely. brought up. No, nah, it was a, a familiar spirit. But he thought it was Samuel because, you know, it was familiar to them. But then what, what did that spirit tell him? You're going to die. You and your son are going to die tomorrow in battle. Exactly. And they, and they died to the why Philistines. Are you me? Yeah, yeah, why are you troubling me? He said, yeah, both of them. But that familiar spirit thing. Because mm -hmm. even the woman was scared because she, thought, cause she right. saw it. She said, whoa. Yeah, right. She even saw it, the witch of right. So, yeah. So, remember, Saul, uh, Saul eventually had them all kicked out. Remember, they, he kicked yeah. them all out. That's why he came in dressed up. And she didn't know. He said, you tricked me. You are Saul. He said, but he said, look, I promise you, he said, uh, that yeah, nothing's going to happen to you, though. Mm -hmm. Of course nothing's going to happen because he died the next day. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know nothing happened when you died right. the next day. Right. Like, wasn't it also Saul was always trying to, in his own way, trying to get back in favor with God? Yeah, but he was always breaking his commandments. That's why the Bible says, you know, right? uh, obedience, you yeah, know, and, uh, yeah, obedience is better than sacrifice. And Samuel used to cry before. Well, he did, yeah. He cried from that. He said, he said, how long? He said, why do you keep crying for him? And he said, look, man, I took crying. the kingdom from him. Exactly. Look, go ahead and anoint David. You know what I'm saying? So you sitting exactly. there crying for him and all this. He said, look, don't worry about him. Because, you know, Saul, Samuel had something with him because, you know, that was the first king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he went there. He so took he, a life he took it like he's a human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But God's like, look, that joke, hey, he ain't, hey, listen, I told him to kill Anak and all them. He brought back, he brought back the king, Anak. And then he also, you know, brought back the spoils. And he said, I told him to kill. He said, he said, what is that noise I'm here in the background? He said, what the word? He said, I told you to kill everything. He said, but the people of Israel pretty much uh, um, led him to take all that stuff back. So he was a weak king. Instead of him exactly. listening, instead of him listening to the king Amen. and listening to the prophet, what Samuel told him to do, he allowed the people of Israel to coerce him and to go ahead and to do things contrary to the word of the Lord. And every time he did that, he would say, well, I'm so sorry. Look, well, look, God said, I'm tired of you always keep doing this. He gave him, he forsaked the king and gave it to King David. I don't think it's scripture, but it's a saying and stuff. God, you know, <laughs> you know, separate me from the opinions of men mm -hmm. because or the thoughts of men because see, you can be on the course trying to do the things for God and stuff and then you have somebody come by and convince you and stuff. Hey man, I don't really think that God really meant that. It's best to do what God has told you. Prime example. Mm -hmm. First exactly. Kings chapter 13 when um, when God had a, 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 a when God had a um, a prophet from Judah to go preach to the um, go tell people from the northern kingdom and, uh, to turn from their wicked ways, right? So that prophet from Judah was supposed to go over there and let them know about their wicked ways, but instead what he, and God said, listen, don't come back. He says, when you go to there, don't eat at anyone's house, don't drink at anyone's house, and don't come back the same way you came through. Mm -hmm. So he went through there, told told the kings and stuff like that about, about what thus says the Lord, and told them how later on when Josiah becomes king, he's going to build up all the all the bones and stuff like that, that, that from the false prophet, he was going to bury them and put them on the um, altar and burn them up. So it says so that that prophet from Judah he leaves out and then the, the, uh, there was another prophet his sons heard what was going on so what he did was he said okay go get him so they went there and inquired about him he said hey how you doing he was like um he said I'm also a prophet too of the Lord and God told no he said he said come to my house and eat he said no I can't do that God said don't don't eat anyone's house. Don't drink anyone's house and don't go back the same way I came in. He said, well, look, well, the, the, the Lord told me, the angel came to me, the Lord told me, it's okay for you to come back to my house. So he listened to him, but God told him not to do this. But he said, well, the Lord told me this. He said, oh, well, he did? Well, okay, well, that's what he told you. He went back, ate with him, and then God prophesied through the man, said, listen, I told you, don't come back here. He said, you're going to die. And he said, you will not, he said, you will not be buried with your fathers in Judah. What happened? A lion came by. A lion devoured him. You know what I'm saying? Devoured him, but didn't eat him, no. And all the men came by and walked by, and they saw him. They were like, and they said, oh, this was the prophet from Judah. He didn't listen to God. He wasn't supposed to, like, say, go back to the town. Right. But by him doing it, but another person lied and said, listen, I got a word from the Lord, too, and God told me this. But he should have listened to whatever the Lord said. Just like saying, if God says keep his feast days and his holidays, but someone's coming up saying, well, no, but God says it's okay, okay to keep Christmas. 
It's okay to do Easter. Mm -hmm. It's okay to do Sunday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not in the scriptures, though. Right. So you're going out of the scriptures and saying it's okay to do these things. But in the scripture, God is saying do this. So the same way God gave him a commandment to do, he didn't listen to him. So therefore, he, you know, he, he didn't come and he didn't get to come back to his land. And get buried in the land of Judah with his forefathers. He was a prophet of God. And he wow. did every everything was all right on the right track until he went back. Because the man said, I'm a prophet too. The angel told me this. I'm like, well, hold up. Well, God ain't telling me this. You know, like some folks say, yeah, you know, uh, now you can be married to somebody. Well, you know, the Lord said you're going to be my husband. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to be, be your husband when I'm married. Hey, I know God ain't tell you that. But folks will say, you will see, the Lord told me this. Well, now, who your God? Because I know it in the God from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the right. only one of Israel. Yeah. That's Satan telling you something yeah. like that. Right. Because yeah. God wouldn't go contrary to his word oh. to say, you're going to be my wife. Or, or, or I'm going to be your husband and I'm married to someone right now. Like, no, that's not that's not the, uh, the word of the Lord. So it's this thing like that that you can tell when someone goes against the Lord or contrary to the word of God. That's how you can tell that they're a false prophet mm -hmm. and don't listen to them. Even though it may sound good, still, don't listen to them. Let's, let's go to uh, Matthew 13. Yeah, but the Lord told me to tell you this. Well, I don't know all that. Because what you're saying is, is contrary to the word of the Lord. So I don't believe the Lord told you that. <laughs> I'm telling you, Lord, I, I swear to God he told me that. Oh, oh now you got to swear, huh? Oh, now, yeah. I know you're lying. Now you're lying. Because God tells you not to swear. God tells you not to swear. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, because what he said about that. Um, and your maybe name. And yeah. Maybe. Yeah, uh, James 5 and 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay, lest yea, unless you fall into the condemnation. Exactly. I swear on the stuff. Or on God. Or right. On God, Shawty. On God. When I say, well, what is so just because you say it on God, I'm supposed to believe you now. Because you out here living like a hellion, but I'm supposed to just believe you anyway. On, on, on God, Shawty. Man, please. Oh, God, nothing. I swear on my mother's grave. I swear, I swear on a stack of Bibles on Sunday. Right. No, I mean, they just go off. All kind of, you be like, hey, just, I'm like, well, if you have to do all that, then you must be a known, you must be the boy who cried wolf, you must be a, a compulsive liar if you got to do all that swearing and all that, right. like, because if you have, if you're a person with integrity, I would already believe you anyway, if you're, if you're a person living, especially living by the word of the Lord, and living, you know, say living according to the Bible and how God wants you to live, and when someone tells you that, I believe them, like I said, especially they're living according to the Bible, right. if they tell me something, oh, I believe them, you know what I'm saying, like that, because I believe, yeah, you ain't got to do all of that for me to believe you. You know what I'm saying? Cross my heart. I cross my heart. heart. Oh, a stack of Bibles yeah, this big. Right. Right. I'm like, yeah, okay. You're trying a little too hard. You're trying a little too hard to make you believe you. So obviously, I think you're telling a lot. Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. All right, go ahead. Another parable put he forth unto them saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Mm -hmm. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, he appeared the tares, then appeared the tares also. Mm -hmm. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, Didst thou, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Mm -hmm. And from whence then hath it tares? Well, he's like, hold on. He says, so where did these tares come from? You sowing good seed in this thing. So watch this stuff. Go ahead. And said unto them, an enemy hath done this. Mm -hmm. The servant said unto him, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Mm -hmm. And he said, nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, mm -hmm. ye root up off also the wheat with them. Amen. Then both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Mm -hmm. So those tares, he said, bind them. 
and he's gonna burn them. We think he's gonna go. We think we think he's talking about the lake of fire. The lake of fire. And then, then then he says, but gather the wheat into his barn. And what's his barn? His barn is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Exactly. It's, it's, it's God's kingdom. But yeah, but he said he said just let them wait until you know until until it's harvest. But let them grow up together. Because like I said, cause, you know if you're doing it before the harvest comes, you're gonna root up the wheat along yeah, with the tares. Exactly. And it's hard to differentiate the two. You know, like that, because you know the barley seed and the wheat look just alike. All right, let's go to um, Luke chapter six. Excuse me, I, I, I'm I, sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, but you know what? This 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 account is so because that's just like in the in, in the world that we live today and stuff. You you come across people and stuff. So oh, he seemed like such a godly person, a godly man, a godly woman and stuff. And and, and it's it, like it says stuff according to righteous people. And unrighteous people and stuff, you may, you know, to the naked eye and to the, you know, you know, that's why I thank God for discernment. Amen. You know, because, you know, see, you would know them, uh, you, you would know by the, by the spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. But the but unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are naive. They just run with them. Oh, man, that, that seems like a really good to God. But God, he knows the difference between, and in his time, he will do the judging. Mm -hmm. No, amen. Amen. Like I said, yeah, discernment as well, but also we read First John. First John four and one, beloved, believe not every spirit, Amen. but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into this world. Mm. So how are you gonna try the spirit? Like I said, how how can you tell spirit, if the, the spirit. If, yeah by the spirit? How can you tell? Is when they're ministering and if they teach anything that's contrary to this Amen. written in this Bible, that's how you know that they're not a, 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 a from God at all, at What's all. Oh, okay. first John, first John four and one. Let's go to Luke chapter 6. Matthew, Matthew 10. 10. Oh, Matthew 10. 10. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, 34. I'm sorry, thanks. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10, 34 to 36. Okay, go ahead. Think not that I come, I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Mm -hmm. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Mm -hmm. And a daughter against her mother, mm. and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, mm, mm, and mm. a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Of his own household. So I'm telling you, it's a lot of this thing in the gospel where you know a lot of times where that's why um, when John, when John, when you read in John uh, Revelation chapter ten, and also with in Ezekiel, when you read in uh, Ezekiel chapter three. When he gave him the book, or he gave him the roll, he said it was sweet, and it came in their mouth sweet like honey. But when it came to the belly, it was bitter. bitter. Why was it bitter? It, first, it was sweet because they realized that they got the true word of God, the revelation of the Lord, and they feel so happy. So the first thing that you want to do is run back to your loved ones, Amen. go go and tell your family what's going on. This is I received this word, it's true word. But now it becomes bitter in your stomach, and they're gonna tell you, oh, I don't want to hear that mess. You teaching this. Now, it, it, it hurts because it's like, hold on, God revealed to me this true word. I'm trying to minister to y'all, but here we are. You're casting me asunder. So when he tells you, when he says, I came not to, not to send peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man at variance against his father and his daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of their own household. Because when you, when you bring this gospel a lot of times to your, to, your, uh, to your intermediate family or your family, a lot of them are going to be like, I don't want to hear that mess, man. Like I said, hold on. So you trying to tell me you ain't going to do Christmas with anymore? You ain't eating this pork anymore? You ain't doing this? You were doing this stuff before? You must be in a cult now. A cult? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, nah, well, mom or whoever, I'm reading everything from the scriptures, and we're not do we're not supposed to be keeping the traditions of men. We're supposed to be following the commandments of God, so that's why I'm doing this thing. And then they get mad at you. And now they now they want to call you all out of your name, but then they're supposed right. to be so-called your brother, sister, mm -hmm. in Christ, and your family member. But they're thinking that you uh, are in a cult because they're so drunk off, off the doctrine that's being spewed right. from Rome. They can't. It's hard for them to decipher or differentiate the true word of God or uh, gospel coming from Rome. Now, granted, we can read everything to them in the scriptures, showing mm -hmm. what's the right way and how God wants to live. They can't read anything in the scriptures, but they still mad because they're coming at you with traditions of men and not of the word of God. But they tell you in their mouth, well, I love the Lord, this and that. But their heart is really far from them because their heart, because they really love the Lord like they claim they did, and they read this, and they saw this, and they're like, whoa, okay, you know what? They will humble themselves, Amen. humble themselves, take that pride from them, and be like, wow, Amen. well, you know what? 
well, dang, well, you know, all these years, I, I, I could have been wrong. You know what? I could have been wrong, this and that. Well, wow, you know, I never really read that. I, oh, I thought Jesus died on Friday evening and okay. rose early Sunday morning. I really thought that, but come here, obviously he didn't do that. It said three days and three nights in the tomb, and he rose on the Sabbath right before the first day of the week was established. Wow, so all this stuff I've been taught, I thought, and when you start, but that's you, you have to be humble. But when yeah, someone comes to you, well, I don't care what you say. I've been doing Easter, doing Christmas, eating pork chop. My grandma made pork chop. My grandma went to church on Sunday. I'm going to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if it was good enough for Big Mama, it was going to be good enough for me. And what's the thing that God hates? Pride. That, that's it. That's pure pride, pride. When, when you have that kind of mentality. And a lot of people have that mentality where they will, where they will do that. And it's like I'm telling you, you do not want to be like that. Because if you are going to be like that, it's, it's, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 6. Luke uh, chapter 6, uh, 22 and 23 and then 26. All right, go ahead. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, mm. and when they shall separate you from their company, mm -hmm. and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil. For the son of man's sake. But remember, what does the last part say, though? Son of man's sake, though. Not because you really evil, you robbing folks, you doing all these. No. He, 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 listen, when you're actually doing, you know, saying doing the will of the Lord, but he said, blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast you off as, cast your name as evil for the son of man's sake. 23, go ahead. Rejoice ye in that day. And leap for joy. Mm -hmm. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Mm -hmm. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, read 26. Watch this. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I said, that's, and that's how I said. Like yeah, yeah, but see, you got a lot of folks who be speaking well of T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar right. and all these different right. things. Oh, yeah, those are true men of God. But here we are coming with the true gospel, uh, but the then gospel. they want to go and speak speak uh, evil of us and say, oh, you right. a cult, you are this, you that. I'm like, whoa, 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 but everything I'm doing is from the scriptures. So woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so their fathers did to the what? False, False prophets. prophets. False prophets. Just like when we read, it was 450 prophets. From the, it was uh, actually 950, no, 850. 950. Oh, not yet. Yeah, it was 450 and 400. That's 850. 850. Yeah, 850. Yeah, it's 850. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, but, but then that one, at 850, they all said, yeah, we like them, yeah. But when that one prophet came, Elijah, from the from God, they all spoke bad about him. Oh, here you go. He always speaking bad about always us. Always trouble. Always trouble in Israel. You know, so like that. So when you're coming to them with the true word of God, they like, oh, don't listen to them. Don't, don't listen to him. But everything that we're teaching, everything that we're coming from is coming from the word of the Lord. So that's why I say so. When so, beware when when people always speak good about you. You know what I'm saying? for joyful when they be. Angry yeah, leave for joy. Yeah, that's why I say when folks. Yeah, when folks. Yeah, they be calling. Oh, you a devil? You this? You that? Remember they called they called Jesus Beelzebub, the chief devil. Sure he said he was casting out devils. You know, it's like he's like, well, he said a kingdom divided within itself can't stand. Exactly. He said, so why would I be casting out devils from these people if I am? A, if I if I'm in darkness, I'm casting out darkness. But that lets you know how people are. <laughs> Thank you. That's but that's that lets you know when people out there who claim now granted the Pharisees and Sadducees what claim they love the Lord, but they really didn't. So so called a lot of these Christians who claim that they love the Lord but want to say that we're, you know, uh, false prophets and, and, and don't speak well about us. You said rejoice in it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Rejoice in it because you know Amen. what you're doing is of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's what is what you're doing is of Glory. the Lord. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the last one. Let's go to Matthew twenty five. Matthew 25, we're going to read uh, 31 through 46. And this is, when, this is also separating the wheat from the tares as well right here, from the believers and the non-believers. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, mm. as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. So you want to be that sheep on the right hand, because you don't want to be that goat on the left. But, but 
To tell me what he's going to say about the sheep on the right hand. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, mm -hmm. Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when ye when saw mm -hmm. when yeah. saw we right. thee and hungered and fed thee, mm -hmm. or thirsty and gave thee drink, when saw we thee a stranger mm -hmm. and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee, when saw we thee sick? Or in prison and came unto thee, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Right. So when you see that, so so when you have, so like I said, that's why when James says, Show me my, he said, my faith. I said, I'll show you my works. You know, he breaks that down in James chapter two. So when you see someone who is desolate, someone you know, in despair, they need help, and you're supposed to be a so-called believer in Christ, mm -hmm. and you have the finances or whatever or the means to do it, but you just say, you know, I'll pray for you, brother. Mm -hmm. That's all right. You want to actually help that person out because he said, when you do that to them, he said, you done. He said, the least of them, you done it all to me. So it's like, and he also also tells you too as well when you read Hebrews chapter thirteen. Um, Hebrews 13 and, yeah, Hebrews 13 and 1. It says, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Let brotherly love uh, continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So you never know, you know what I'm saying, like that, whereas, you know, when you're helping someone out and someone comes to you, and especially if you have it. Now, I understand if you don't have it, that's understandable. You know, it's like that. But when you really have it and you still don't want to give it to them, but you're supposed to be a so-called believer I'll in Christ, pray for you. yeah, I'll pray for you, do all these things, but you don't want to help that, that person out, that's that's not cool. You know, so you're supposed to be able to help that person out, especially when you're in that position when you're able to do it. Verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall ye they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to, to one of the least of these, mm -hmm. ye did it not to me. And watch verse 46. Mm. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Mm -hmm. so, when, so, so when you're pretty much helping people out, keeping the commandments of God, and having faith in Jesus Christ, he said, you, you will, he said, you'll go into eternal life, have eternal life with him. But when you're not keeping the commands of God or not helping your fellow brother or man out, he says, he said, these shall go into, into everlasting punishment. What's everlasting punishment? Is, is that, is that, is that, because you know, a lot of people think, well, God, 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 he loves us so much. He would never throw any of us into the lake of fire. But what does he say when he, when he first starts this off in 41? He says, I'm 25 and 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left-hand side, depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. He just said, we weren't supposed to go there. That's but right. see, but now, since you want to not, not be obedient to my word, you're going to end up going where they're going. I want you to come into the kingdom. He said, well, we said I wish that all men should, uh, should repent and, and, you know, and, um, and not perish, but, but come but coming to the gospel. But, but instead, um, instead of people doing that, he's trying, you know, he's trying to say, listen. Yeah, so, so pretty much when you're keeping his commandments, and you're helping out your fellow neighbor, you say uh, you'll be on his right-hand side with the sheep. But if you're not doing those things, you're going to be on the left-hand side with the goat. So it's, it's very imperative, like I said, to keep his commandments, to have faith in him, and to walk in his ways, and to help our fellow man. Amen. 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 I pray that you got some understanding.